folks, welcome back to the CCL. The Alpha Stream is going to be heated tonight as we start off with High Point University against the Seahawks. It's going to be fantastic. Myself, Seymour, alongside Mick to bring you this action. And Mick, I cannot wait for these teams to start up. Let's dive into it. How do you feel about this first matchup? Um, I'm feeling good overall. You know, I'm hoping with these guys. At high Point, they are sick. You know, we were talking about this earlier. High Point, 6-0, and, and the Seahawks are 3-3. Three and three. You know, I was kind of discouraged at first, but, you know, you did mention, and I looked up, you know, looking at their stats, overall, they do have a chance here. They're great overall. We see performance out of them, and I really think they're capable to actually pull something out tonight. Oh, 100%. I mean, the Seahawks, you you look at their stats on paper, and yeah, they're significantly not as high in the standings as high point, you know, being 6-0, and but still that 3-3 three and three record, you look at the player stats, individually, they look solid. It's just... Are they going to play together today? Are they going to kind of work as one instead of four different in individuals? I, I know it, it might be hard against a team of this caliber, a high point, probably looking to break into the top 25 of the CCL with this with this game. But, I mean, Seahawks, you have a good opportunity here to take down a really big team. Yeah, and, you know, overall, I feel like that's exactly what these guys are looking for. They can establish themselves. They kind of look like they're in the middle, and nobody's really looking at the stats overall besides us guys, and, you know, everybody's looking at numbers and looking overall just standings. And if these guys get a chance to shut down high point, you know, that's that's huge for them. Even though they beat four and three at that point, they will be really looking well because, you know, going forward, they know that they're capable of taking down these larger teams, and that could be a huge determining factor to them for them going forward because they could have that same confidence when they run into a harder team per se in the future. Well, definitely going to be a tough one indeed for the side of the Seahawks. But I mean, if you guys want to know the maps, if you, I mean, it's above me, but I hope you're a fan of checkmate and raid because we got a, we got a lot of that for game one. It's checkmate, hard point, raid, search and destroy, checkmate, control, raid, hard point. And we're going to finish it off on Moscow as we go to the motherlands. If it goes the distance and, Honestly, when I'm looking at the Seahawks compared to, uh, to, to the side of High Point, I mean, the Seahawks really have to look at that game number two. Uh, I mean, they have players who are solid in s and I'm, I'm looking at, at players like... Uh, sorry, players like Combat to, to really kind of take his own and, and really stand out for this team of the Seahawks against High Point because High Point's a team of four individuals who work really well together. They're all pretty consistent around uh, around each other that's why they found the success the seahawks they have a lot of individuality i just need to see them kind of work together as one yeah and i'm really excited to look at this hard point these guys every single game so far for the most part they've been having a lot of really close games anytime they lose it's only about a you know within a five point to ten point margin so overall they just have to be able to close out they can perform to the whole game but that's the learning curve that they got to get into and that's what they need to establish today if they're going to take over a team like high point and you really look at a high point. I mean, they only dropped three maps. I think one was a search and destroy, a hard point. I think they actually dropped two two searches and a hard point in it all. So really looking at uh, uh, you really looking at hard point to be that breaker for the Seahawks in this. When you look at control, I think the 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 team high point are really going to be superior in this, really going to bring their all. It's a tough one to kind of break when you have a team of a caliber who's just so successful in that game mode. The Seahawks, they got to look at that. They got to look for that early victory. We're going to hop into this game one. It's going to be checkmate, hard point, Mick. I can't wait to see what these teams have to bring. Yeah, me too. You know, looking forward. And also to mention on what you said about control, you know, if these guys they can close it out right here, win this hard point, they have a lot of breathing room because they know how well they do on control. And if they give up search by any chance and don't get to close it out there, they still have plenty of opportunity going forward. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, checkmate hard point is a good start for the the map or for the team of Seahawks. You're really looking at AR pressure and mid control here from these teams. Is I mean Mid's the most chaotic point of a map like Checkmate. I mean, points one and three, both going to be above and underneath the plane. So you're really looking at those SMGs to kind of work those two hard points. Make sure you keep a toe on it while your ARs create that pressure around it. Create that line of scrimmage to not allow those uh, those teams to get in. It's because when you have a point like point five or point two that are on opposite sides of the map, if you have that, that line of scrimmage, you have those ARs in the power angles, you can really shut down your opposing team and really cause them to spawn out really far in this, giving you some extra money. Heal. So let's hop right into this. Let's see what we have. You got the Seahawks on the left, uh, high point on the right, checkmate, hard point. Let's get into it. 
And we see these guys with a really good setup here. We already got men going for planks. We already got guys looking for ways to get around these other guys and find ways to infiltrate the hard point from every angle. But sadly, Seahawks getting shut out right there in the beginning. High point getting a really strong start here, which, you know, those flanks may not be all that much if you don't get an early opportunity. Already, already. Big control to high point. Still contested on both sides. You're rushing Sem Semax. Bruin through the wall. Takes him out. High point. Keeping it busy, keeping the lead here, but the Seahawks just making sure that they can keep a, a, a foot on this point. You see a split spawn coming out from the side of high point as they're looking for this point two spawns. You gotta look for three and sexton. And what can they do? Semtex gonna get caught out on the rotation. So point two spawns are gonna go to high point early in this game for the start of point number two. Yeah, we see these guys are already established themselves on that point too. And when you're in this position of the Seahawks right here, you need to be looking at, do you really need to infiltrate this that much? Do you just want to contest time, which is usually what you want to opt for? Or because if you have that strong start right there, you're losing these spawns. You're looking more to establish those instead of establishing yourself on point. Because then it can sit there and buy you at least 20 seconds in the later end of it. Because at that point, you're going to already be looking for guys to go ahead and rotate. And you want to allocate your guys to try and get the flank over there and cut off those spawns. Because we do see they're on opposite sides of the map, which is how two and three usually go. And these are the most controversial because that could establish either a super early lead and allow, you know, some kind of uh, some kind of win to already be established overall. But it could also be a very determining thing of back and forth and showing what these teams are capable of going forward when it comes to, you know, their map intellect. Seahawks going to give up on this point number two. Scrap time the whole time pretty much going to go to high point here as they have a significant lead going into the third hard point. But mid plane control to the Seahawks early. Broken fast by high point as these ARs are putting all the pressure on free himself. 10 and 5 here on a three spree. Locking down the point. Going to swing wide, but two players there to shut him down. Semtex getting close to the point. Going to slide on in and even take control of this Seahawks. What can they make of this? They have good control underneath the plane, but Sex going to come out. He's going to take control. Make sure that nobody is gaining points here. 30 seconds left on this and a toss-up for the pull. Yeah, and we see these Seahawks right here. They do have that control, but... We also see High Point getting ready for a pretty big infill right here. These guys are looking for ways to push in as the Seahawks are kind of rotating around the point rather than, you know, establishing themselves around on the point. And overall, that's what's going to cost them if, you know, High Point gets the best of any of these guys. We do see Simtex doing a great job here holding it out and getting a couple kills there, you know, doing the most of what he can to hold this down. But at this point, we already see High Point getting ready, trying to rotate and establish themselves on the next point because uh, all in all, when you lose that whole time, they want to go ahead and make sure they're ready for the next one. FlemDZ on the rotation. Going to lock down the initial time. Currents on the outside of the box. He's going to go for the challenge and win out on it, shutting down that three spree. You see the contention combat swings in for two. Back to Seahawks for point number three. An even game right now between both sides and combat pushing for more. Pushing these spawns and backing high point into the second hard point. Yellow two. And combat, he wants us even farther. He's going to take this line of scrimmage that I was talking about. And honestly, they give up spawns because of it. So a little bit of a misplay from combat. And high point in a really good opportunity to lock down point five. 20 seconds left on point number three. Yeah, and we see, you know, even if High Point does get these points right here, overall we see that the Seahawks are already set up for that next point. It's huge for them because of how over it is on the map. These guys are getting set up for it as best as they can, so by the time they come around, you know, mention those funds again. But High Point overall is not letting that happen. These guys, they knew they were going back and forth, and they said, okay, if this game is going to be this close, we can cut our losses right here, and we can get an advantage going on the next one, which overall, if it's in a corner and you get that stronger setup, these corner points are so much harder to try and get to because you don't have as many angles coming. Triple ARs of high point really gonna range through to this fifth hard point. Already breaking triple digits. Freeze the only one touching down on point five. The rest gonna look to make sure that they can lock down the space for this rotation on the reset. You do see Semtex take down Sexton mid map control back to the Seahawks, but once again, this triple AR setup. So strong for this point five. Jumpy is going to try to put a foot down, but cleaned up by the SMG of high point. Now, Sex is going to recover a Craig three fall for high point. Lemdeezy is going to try to get the last one. Saxon getting suffocated on either side, but only seven seconds for Seahawks to kind of take away from the side of high point. We're back on the reset. 
And Seahawks, what can they do with this early uh, this early contestion? Brewing slides in. Combat's gonna take him down. Combat for two. As they get initial time. We see these guys trying to push up from those points, going up on those stairs, but that's a little bit too predictable, especially when you're playing against each other. You know, at this level, you know guys are going to be coming from these stairs. Combat's ready for it. You need to be looking more for coming in from the wings, finding a flank of some uh, kind, getting those wall bangs and getting as much intel as possible. And we didn't see High Point utilizing that enough until right now in the later area of the point, only getting contested with it, not establishing any kind of control or a collective push on it. Gotta look at Seahawks here. I mean, they're doing such a good uh, job at getting the scrappy hard points to their favor. That being points one, three, and uh, even four. That's what's keeping them in this because really, high point, they've only really secured point two and five. And that's why this is an even game. You have to look at these scrappy hills to be more controlled by high point if they want to take it. That's where you see this the SMG setups from Seahawks kind of rain better over the triple ARs now. Seahawks, they have the second hard point control spawns. Let's see if they can hold on to this make. Yeah, and at this point, they are looking to get these cutoffs, which are doing a great job of by high point. When well, you know they're moving onto that corner, you're trying to stop that as best as possible. And if you let a single man pass through, then get those spawns. So we do see the Seahawks maintaining and being able to get those spawns, allowing them to get on that point, hold it down. But at this point, you know, high point does have the advantage going into this next one because if they can hold these guys back here and not let anybody cross out and do a much better job than they did rotating from p1 to p2 they can hold these guys on this side of the map for the almost the rest of the time and get a whole nother point going here and then especially with the next one after that and being on the other side of the map it just totally locks out seahawks that's high points turn to lock down point three sexton underneath the plane you have the first foot down Flash is not going to land. The ARs controlling the plane for high point and point number four as well. So a good crossfire to make sure that they can spawn trap in point two. Sexton not even having to battle out. The ARs are taking care of it. Jumpy might have something to him if he takes to his left. Sexton could have the first gunfight. Wins it out. Traded immediately by Semtex. But the back and forth is just favoring high point. As it's free coming out on top, and Flem DZ has a big one on one to win here. He's gonna take it. Seahawks pull back, and they break on through, but an even game at that still for point three. Ninkern's right there. He had an opportunity to turn on that guy and help out. You know, Sexton, who is on point, getting ready to set up for that. But we saw he was pushing those spawns instead, which usually in this case of the game, you don't want to be doing. Well, especially on this plane site right here, you don't want to overextend when you have the side advantage for this next point that's getting set up for the next two, in fact. You don't want to sit there and get those spawns flipped, which is exactly what happened here. And now High Point's looking for a way to retake this, reestablish themselves as the Seahawks are already, you know, roaming free over here in the middle of the map. Combat and Semtex are doing a good job at slaying out with these SMGs compared to the triple AR setup. Sexton, opportunity to push the lane. Gonna find one, looks for the spawn kill, but Semtex has help. Combat, gonna make sure he stays strong. Brewing now on point. Kern's gonna watch over him. Combat beaming with nukes as he's gonna spawn in. Brewing, gonna shut him down. The spawns on the, on the second hard point come through for Seahawks. They're gonna get back on this third hard point. As high point maintaining spawns for point number five. Combat going to take control of the plane and wipe point three or point four from any high point member. Combat locking down the time. 17 seconds left. High point probably going to look for the rotation. Get these guys, you can see they're already setting up for it. They want to get these guys locked down on these points. They want to make sure those spawns are locked on the other side of the map because if they can get that going. Brewing not exactly being set up for that yet. And Jumpy's already going to be on that point. And in the meantime, he's just losing time because it's already rotated. These guys didn't make the move on the point. Instead, just finding those long angles to kind of lock these guys out and not finding a way to manipulate that for their advantage. A good break from the front for Seahawks. Contesting the time, but Combat and Semtex, the slayers of the team, doing what they do best and keeping the kills in favor of the Seahawks. Now they break 200 first, 30, 40 seconds to win it out. Semtex watching over the break from the front coming through for high point, but staying strong, staying steady is the Seahawks. Now 20 seconds, two minute, 220 seconds, only 25 on the point. So we are going to see another reset here, Mick. But the majority of the time, 4.5 going to go to Seahawks. High point has to lock down point one. And they have to do it efficiently. 
And Sexton finally making a break here, which is exactly what these guys needed. If you let them get all that time over there in that last point, it seems like they only need a couple seconds. It would have only been like maybe four or five seconds on that last point. And we see them already getting set up for it. Seahawks just being two steps ahead of these guys, it looks like. And that's really what's giving them the benefit of the doubt here. Overall, when you sit there and you get these points and you don't have high point trying to contest and not exactly just stopping them from getting points, but it seems as if they're just thinking they have too much of an advantage here. And instead of just looking to get points, you just need to stop the enemy team from getting those, especially when they're in that 232 situation right now. You have to find a way to stop the momentum. Sexton, that's a big one-on-one. -on -one. You have to win. Luckily, your team is back. Combat, though, on point. This big Slayer, 46 and 22. Looking to clear it, but Free takes up a big kill. Semtex on point. Sexton's going to pull out, pull out with a kill on top of Brewing. So two players go back down for Seahawks. Point two control also in favor of High Point right now. So if they lock down this, if they make sure it goes to the next one, you might be seeing a money heal. Where we've seen high points succeed before. Kearns is going to be watching that jumpy. You have no chance winning out on that high point. Opportunity to win it out on this point. Yeah, and that's exactly what these guys want. We've seen them do, be pretty strong on P2. We've seen them kind of back and forth on P3. This is where they either are in there and they get shut out or either they lock the other guys in there. So usually favoring the Seahawks with how well they know this point. Simtex already oh. making a break right there. And overall, it shows that the Seahawks, they're not giving up on this. They're doing a great job of finding ways and utilizing these points and you know, trying to scrap together because they did a great job shutting a high point in that P1, not letting them get too many points, just trying to contest as best as possible so they can sit there and establish themselves on this P2. Seven seconds, Kern's a big win. Free to help him out. High point still holding on from yellow. Flemdeezy gets the kill, almost getting the second one as well, but Kern's maintaining point control. Now the mass correct, they can win off of this as well. Jumpy has to touch down. Sexton gonna go out, so contention not on just yet. Jumpy gonna make sure that there's another hard point. I'm pretty sure. No, it's not enough time. High point. Mm. They're gonna win it out with a very scrappy point five and a comeback. Where Seahawks definitely, definitely are gonna be kicking themselves after this hard point match. Yeah, that was a little bit too close for comfort for these guys. We saw them. They did great on P2, and I think they're relying on that going into this last round. We didn't see too much contestion going back and forth. We saw these guys, especially when they were infilling, they didn't sit there and have the comms on that P1. You know there's a table right there. We saw Sexton, all these guys moving up on the plane onto that P1 site, and we saw that guy on table, but there was nobody calling that out. Instead, they were just worried about man here, man there, worrying about planes and flanks and things like that. Let your teammates care take care of that. We mentioned last night, man, shift that. Those walls are not wooden. They are paper mache on that plane. Yeah. So you just need to fire anywhere you can, know the layout of that plane, and just shoot that because you're going to get hit markers, and it's almost not going to sacrifice any damage at all with how thin those walls are. And that's what they need to do to close out that point and find a way to get an advantage going there because I feel like they were gambling a little bit too much on P2 right there, You know, looking at the history of how that match went. And you even saw Semtex and Flem TZ. They got a big break from the back on that point too, except... I mean, there were so many angles that were in favor of High Point when you had to it. And Flem DZ, when he walked onto it, I mean, he was looking here, there, everywhere. He just, he didn't have a comfortable gunfight. And that's where I'm seeing that individuality kind of fall, falter for this for a team like Seahawks. I mean, by all means, they, they had such a good opportunity to win it. I mean, 243 to 250, that's as close as you can ask for. I mean, unless it was 249 to 250, but... Even still, like a, a team like Seahawks, who has that three and three record, really showing that this six and O team of High Point, they bleed, and Seahawks definitely can take it out. Now we're looking at Raid Search and Destroy as the next map, Mick. And when I'm looking at Seahawks, I mean, you got Semtex at a 1.8 KD for Search and Destroy, and you have Combat at a 2.69 kill death ratio for Search and Destroy. So I'm really looking at those two players to kind of crack this open and maintain their high slang potential to kind of take over High Point on this raid map. Yeah, and that's exactly what they were looking at at this point. Just like you said, they want to find a way because being they kind of gave up hard point, they don't want to lose this raid by any means. They know they can get that control. They know they do well on that mode, but you don't want to be put in a 2-1 situation where it feels like you are forced to win control. If you do so well in it, you know, it's kind of like the whole mentality with your parents. Like, if you feel like cleaning your room, you'll do it. But once they tell you to, it's like, I don't feel like it anymore. 
So wow. it's the same thing with control to where it's like, maybe if they sit there and get put into a situation where it's like, you have to win this. They're like, well, I mean, what's the point at this, uh, at this time, you know, we're going to go right back to hard point and lose it again. Like these guys need the confidence to go forward and find a way to create some space for themselves. So when they go into that control, they know that they can get the leap once again. And even seeing, seeing like seeing the comfortability of a three AR setup from the likes of high point. I mean, you might not want to kind of gamble everything onto a checkmate control being is that you are going to have to fight into a defensive setup of three ARs that are big, the highly capable of slaying you all the way yeah. back in your spawns and spawn trapping you. So you don't really want to put all of that on here. I think the Seahawks, this is a must win map for them against high point. I'm really looking at them to take control. I mean, definitely have already highlighted Semtex and combat two of them. I mean, raid a very sneaky map for some machine gun players. And if they can kind of work the routes, sneak in behind, they definitely could find some big success for the, for the Seahawks. I, I, I just, I, I need to see that teamwork as well on mm -hmm. top of it, where, I mean, you look at point number two for the side of checkmate Hardpoint, and you saw high point really take a, take it all to the front of that yellow crate. Every single time that the Seahawks had spawn control, there was just it was just simple breaks from the front of yellow for yeah. high point to keep it contested, keep it in their favor. So that that when it's coming that down to that, you really need the communication to kind of overextend, clean up those players that are that are flooding on through, and then make sure that your spawn control is hold, uh, holding steady to the money hills of point two. But I'm gonna need to see some teamwork translate into the search and destroy because there was something missing from the Seahawks, and it really costed them that uh, that last map. Yeah, and I'm I'm with you completely on that. And going into raid, you know, we need to see these guys like combat and like stepping up here in the front, looking for that mid control on offense or defense, especially on that defense, because if you can get that mid control, you can open yourself up to the whole map and have that area. But you know, right here we're already going to see them fighting for it in combat, winning one, but getting traded out there. That's three big three quick kills for the Seahawks, jumpy. To bring one on back two more players to go brewing and free setting up the crossfire from mid first shots from free you're gonna land into his back now they group together they bring the bomb back they're going for the plant free not spotted by jumpy so that's gonna put some indecisive in his mind the bomb does go down and in that plant you already have jumpy back into the middle courtyard working from pillars free laundry Brewing, holding in Prism. All right, away we go. Jumpy's going to push on through. The crossfire is too strong. High point open up first. Uh, the, uh, as I said, it was going to come right down to that mid control. I feel like you know, these guys for high point, they were a little bit way too aggressive up front. But, you know, they sat there and won it out because of that purely. And the Seahawks, I feel like, you know, you didn't have any Ming over to A So from what we saw. We saw their guys go to mid or we saw them go over to B. And when you're looking at that, you know, either you need to do a one, two, one layout for something like that, or you need to sit there and go with a, you know, a, a two, one, one, something of the likes. You need to be allocating your men to every single one of those points. So say if they do push or you have a guy who's on staircase oh. ready, ready to go and sit there and get some kills there. But it didn't seem like they were spread out well enough. They didn't know exactly how to lay themselves out to retaliate. And that's what cost them that round getting closed oh. out so quickly. This is huge from brewing. Now he's literally trapping them inside their cage of the B-Site. Flemdizzy and Jumpy fine too, but Free's going to clear on out, leave Flemdizzy alone. A one-on-one -on -one now, Free goes down. I don't know if Flemdizzy spotted out Kearns, Kearns, and Flemdizzy gets behind him. Seahawks answer back, and I have to say that was a solid setup from High Point for that retake, absolutely surrounding the B setup that the Seahawks had. Brewing got those two kills, but in the mismatch, in the chaos... It was traded on back and flemped easy. That trade, leaving it into a one-on-one, -on -one, gave him the perfect timing to get behind Kearns. Yeah, it's a real shame that Kearns right there kind of gave that up. We did see Flem Dizzy overall getting three kills right there. He was obviously a huge playing part in terms of that round. But, you know, Kearns, he doesn't want to sit there and let that happen again, especially, you know, him being the reliable factor, knowing there's a guy right there. You know, obviously, I, in all honesty, I would have done the same thing. Because when you know a man, he has the bomb. He's going to be out there. He's going to be looking to plant possibly here soon. You're going to have that tendency to keep looking that way. Ooh. But, you know, you've got to watch those corners as well. You know, Seahawks, they went for the gamble of a four-player four set, four setup on the B site. And it was the right call. 
Except they weren't aware of the attack that was coming for them. It was literally a four on four for the B site. And Free just opened up with Sexton working on this the ring. And they took control of this. Now Seahawks losing out on that leaves them down a, uh, down a round. High point up two to one. Man, that's... <laughs> We just see a lot of B-sites here, you know? I I'm trying to sit there and think of when these guys are going to switch it up. And we finally see the Seahawks doing there that. You, know. you know, oh, the whole game, we sat there and saw B-engagements, mini-engagements, things of the likes of that. And you know at this point, these guys are going to have to be looking somewhere else. Oh, and with this, know. we're going to see them possibly change it up here and, you know, get in another offensive round where they don't have to rely on a man getting three kills. Oh, Free is disgusting with that Craig and Saxton breaks on from the spawn. Big flank. Gonna take out, leave Jumpy all alone. Sexton closes out in that last one. And a solid retake from High Point from that setup. I mean, Cruz gets that, that first, in, Kearns gets the first initial spot. The information is to, uh, is to High Point. He gets out with his life free, maintaining mid control, ready for the pressure. Finds not just one, but tags into the second one. Sexton, the flank, not watched by Seahawks and therefore allows them to get in there, find two kills, and take them up two rounds. Yeah, that's a situation you never really want to be in. When you know, especially in a slower game mode like Search and Destroy, when you see a man getting multiple kills in one best play cam, you, you've got to sit there and consider, I probably didn't do something right there. We saw this guy up top. You know, we saw the Seahawks setting up around that top bedroom and things of the likes of that, but overall... That's only going to do you so much if you're not watching that flank because there is so much open space back there in your spawn. An easy way to get through mid, especially seeing how high points broken that so easily. So, you know, going forward, I think these guys want to go for A again because overall it could have worked, but they just got to learn from their mistakes going forward and find a way to get that bomb down. Already player down for high point, but it was evened up now. Once again, traded combat gets in behind, finds the flank where Sexton was working last time around. And Brewing, taking some shots, top art. Gonna get out with his life. Sexton recovers the bomb now. A is their their sights. And both players of high point. Kind of leading over towards the B side of the map. You have laundry occupied and mid courtyard. So this is gonna be a relatively easy plant for Sexton once he gets that bomb down. And having bedroom control is gonna be huge for, uh, for high point. But combat has the opportunity to get in behind. Is he gonna work this flank? So he does. And here you have Brewing watching this. XM4 versus 74U. Mm. First initial shots. Brewing's going to win that all day. Flem DZ left alone. One on two. Sexton. Antiki. Brewing. Top bedroom. Sexton's going to put the first shot. To play his life. Information to high point. Flem DZ in a terrible position, mm. but a big opening. Now 19 seconds. 7.5 to successfully get that defuse. Sexton works it all the oh. way around to money. Gets in behind and high point four to one. Great play right there by Sexton. You know, brewing right there in Flindies. He did have the opportunity once again to close this out. He didn't move in quick enough. He didn't utilize his cover, making himself a little bit open instead of pushing in there on bar to make sure to get that kind of pull view and things like that to close in the map a little more in terms of intel and trying to close that situation. But Sexton was so quick that with that rotation, and that was so smart of him to be playing, you know, those engagements where he's always favored with that 74U. He knew that, you know, maybe in this case I don't win if I back up and he has an XM4. So what I need to do is I need to – Utilize the speed I get from this 74U. Make my way around to money and get an easy money shot on this man. The way that High Point are just setting up with these XM4s, playing those mid to long range, this allows them to be so aggressive with these assault rifles. Combat one on three, now one on two. Burns gonna be burned. Nade's not gonna land a one on one Sexton. Not going to be stunned up. Semtex going to land. Takes the gunfight. Clutch ace from combat. Oh, my lord. That's what they needed right there. It, it's a real shame, though, that, you know, so far the Seahawks, anytime they win a round, it's based off a clutch. It's based off an ace of some kind. It's all reliant on one man, and it feels like the rest of these guys are only being used for intel and another guy stepping up to the plate, and he's the only one swinging. Oh, like overall, these guys need to find a way as a collective team to organize themselves to win these gunfights because overall it feels like they're being a little too aggressive 
for their own good because overall high points winning these gunfights and they can't sit there and keep losing these and risking it. They had a big one on for FlemDZ. He thought Free had the player sliding in. Brewing gonna take down Semtex. So traded even. Sexton tagged up and even stunned FlemDZ. If you get an eye on this, you might be able to take this kill, but does this spot the player finally gets those shots in? The AR is just gonna have that higher headshot damage. Jumpy all the way in the back line. Do they know he's there? Combat a big win. Kearns brings it to a two-on-one. So Jumpy was spotted out, but now Kearns in a tough situation. Both players on either side. One watching mid, one watching the B site. Kearns is going to opt to rotate all the way back to A and get that bomb down. And I think high point will be in a much better situation right now if they wanted to go ahead and offer that rotation earlier. When you're looking at the situation oh. that he had his men in, the way that brewing was set up, it just didn't favor these guys. You know, you had the bomb carrier all the way back in garage. You obviously want to protect that bomb as best you can, but you also need to be looking to get it down somewhere and then put these defenders on their toes. And I, I just don't feel like there's been a situation where we've seen that yet besides those, you know, small situations where Flynn Deasy feels like he's in a clutch situation so far. Well, Seahawks have brought it back by one, Mick. They have done a phenomenal job at keeping themselves in this. Off the back of FlemDZ in combat, seven and five for each of them. Semtex rocking that donut, saluting to us from the kill feed. Oh, and seven. The agent himself, James Bond, on here. FlemDZ gives himself his eighth, the first blood to the Seahawks there. Looking like they're more favoring the B site, Mick, with one player that's brewing, watching from Laundry, just keeping an eye on that bomb, watching for the cross. Very slow play right here from high point, but still aggressive angles. And these are the times that we're going to see which team is exactly better with, you know, utilizing themselves. We see a lot of guys just around corners from each other, and we got to see how well each one of these guys check their corners. Flumdeezy not being one of those people, sadly. That's going to give up the site. Kearns on the flank. A Krig 6. Not the gun you usually have for a flank like this, but it's the one you're going to have to work with. Semtex checks it. Finds his first kill of the game. And leaves Sexton. Last alive. Jumpy's going to be watching the rotation. Seahawks tie us up, Mick. Okay. Okay, Seahawks. I see you. They're, they're, I, I see what they're doing here. I think they're cashing in more on you know high points mistakes than their own successes. Like, we see these guys being very upfront, but anytime the high point makes a mistake, they're capitalizing on it. They're doing a very good job of whenever any of these guys are isolated, they're making sure to team up on them and, you know, kind of aggress around the map, see if anybody's roaming, and then team up on those and get the numbers advantage like that. And Ooh. overall, they got to sit there and continue that momentum and find ways when they're on offense. Sometimes high point may not just be aggressive, and that's not wow. going to be good enough for them. That was a big 74 win from combat. Evens it up to a piece on the team's Jumpy. Watching that big cross. Freeze can be spotted, but Jumpy playing their life. They have to watch this rotation coming around. Freeze going to spot the flank. Combat goes down, opens up for a B plant. And that is going to provide strong post plant positions for high point to possibly give themselves a 5 4 advantage. Now let's see where they set up. They're going for laundry control for that assault rifle. With number two brewing on that XM4, holding on to the ring. Jumpy, occupying art, watching for the prism, but not really gaining anything. No information to be had just yet. Jumpy taking his time, very efficiently checking this. 21 seconds left on the clock. Spots free, but hasn't seen brewing yet. Going to put the shots out. Should imagine the trade is going to be there, but not even needed. Free doesn't go down high point. Five to four. Oh, Bruin dropping down that man like Batman right there. Just, you know, death from above. And, and it's that's a really shameful situation to be put in. But, you know, I feel like the determining factor that round right there was on combat. You know, I, I got to sit there and help out these players on an individual basis. When he sits there, he had every single angle right there. When you had the call knowing that a man was right there on mid and he's backing up and you're over there in garage, you have... All these avenues that you have such ease of access to. You know he's either going to go over into art and he's going to go in that building right there and you need to be watching those angles as you're passing through. Maybe that was just a missed call or something in the likes of that. But as you're trying to push towards spawn and let them know whether they're going to B-side or not, 
you got to watch these angles because you're going to run into that man and you can have an easy winnable gunfight right there. So, you know, I feel like combat, if he survived there, you know, UP, it, it, High Point could have taken that. Seahawks looking to push it to a round 11 here. Jumpy getting aggressive to the B site with this XM4. Actually, get some eyes on the cruise. Saxon also got stunned up. Kearns, though, going to take the kill. So, first blood to the side of High Point. Bad timing for combat. Brewing going to slide wide. Semtex for the trade, but damage is done from High Point. They have the advantage. And Sexton on the flank to leave Semtex last alive. He has the bomb. A hope and a dream. Let's see what he can make of it. He's going to peek from laundry. Put some shots into Sexton. Gets out. Not going to mm. check his corner. High point's going to take the game 6-4. to four And lead the series 2-0, Mick. Man, I I'm feeling bad for these Seahawks right now. They looked really good at hard point. They've given us the game when it came down to switch and destroy. You know, bringing it back as best they can. But overall, they need this checkmate win at this point. And like, at first... It was optional. It was really like they just, they kind of needed it. Yeah. But now at this stage, it is their last resort. And it's the one thing that's going to turn this around. So even if it comes to it, when they win that control, it, it, you know, theoretically speaking, they still have to go forward and win hard point and be able to close it out once again. And, you know, we've seen them lose on, oh, we've seen them lose on hard point. We've seen them lose on Ray today against high point. And going forward, looking at that, it's not going to sit there and favor them. They need to sit there and do that. And even if they do breathe live into that again, they have to sit there and adapt to a whole new map and a whole new mode to search and destroy when facing high point. Because, you know, these guys, they just do it a little bit better. And we, we, well, we've seen a lot of highs for the for our Seahawks. We've also seen some pretty low lows for them as well. And uh, right now, the lows favoring them as they are down by two. We need to see that comeback here, and High Point is going to be a tough team to battle out in control as they've only dropped one control map over their six games win spree. I mean, Mick, you're looking at that. It was still a game or a round five loss in that control as well, so this is going to be a tough matchup here. High Point, they have to be feeling pretty good going into this one, especially in checkmate when you're running that triple AR, the one Craig, two XM4s. I mean... The X and fours are enough to maintain that mid map control and that Craig just playing from afar, playing those power angles. There's just so much punch packing on this team for high point. And I agree with you. You know, the Craig, I feel like it's going to be a little bit more strong in those medium range engagements where they're going to be kind of closing off those X and or not those X and the AK 74 use as much as possible. Lots of fours and gun names. I just realized, but uh, overall, just these guys got to sit there and capitalize on that. They need to close it out. They also need a man with SMGs kind of maneuvering back and forth between those points with a man in the back kind of watching over as best as possible because when you're running three AKs, or not AKs, ARs, you overall have to find ways to favor yourself and checkmate it so open. And with that, if you get infilled by any kind of way and these guys push through your defenses, it's almost – you're going to be rendered useless, it feels like, because you're not favored in those gunfights. You really have to be looking at at holding on to your lives as well for a team like a Seahawks. You, you've been playing really aggressively. Now it's time to slow it down because you don't want to just be throwing yourselves at these ARs of high point. You're just going to be literally giving giving up lives at that. So, so Seahawks, a big test to them. We're going to head to a little bit of a break, though, as we get these, these players ready and set up. This is a little bit of an issue, so don't go anywhere. The CCL will be really right back with some Alpha Stream. And we are back and not wasting any time. We're right into the control mix. So let's take a look at the Seahawks fighting back from an 0 and 2 high point on series point. They got to do it here if they want that 3 0. And if Seahawks want to see the likes of this map, map 4, they have to pull this back. Yeah, and we got to sit there and get these guys stepping back up. Simtex didn't have the strongest start when it came to search and destroy, but he does get a trade out here right on the front end of things. But, you know, and when it comes to the front end of things, Free doing a great job of, you know, starting out with that 2-0, getting these kill leads right here. Sadly, getting traded out right there. But overall, we see these guys not exactly opting for these points too much, but Seahawks finally looking for a way to get on this B site and start getting some time on the board. Sexton using the bullfrog. Okay, somebody's feeling himself here. He's one and two. Let's see what he can do with this submachine gun. Gonna even himself out in the kill feed. But on this defense, high point looking good. Progression for the Seahawks. 
on the A side of the map. Looks like they're going to gain one tick before being brought down by Brewing. And sent right back. Sexton looking for that opening into the back spawn here, Mick. Lemzy's going to be caught out. Bullfrog finds one victim. Going to be challenged by combat. And that's combat taking it down. A site is where you want to see the, the likes of Seahawks take this deep into the game. But lives semi-even. You're down to 30 seconds, so time is going to play a big factor here. Yeah, and I usually do bring up the fact that, you know, I like seeing these teammates split back and forth between these points. But the way the Seahawks are trying to execute, it almost seems like they're not exactly getting any ticks on the board with either one of these points. They're getting so close and not finding that way to finish out, you know, get a third onto the board. And sadly, that looks like it's going to cost them their first round here. Uh, Sexton's just a maniac in that back spawn. High point, very demanding or very commanding round number one over the likes of the Seahawks and even with that bullfrog you're just looking at the AR some of these power angles the triple AR setup this is what I was worried about for them once they get set up on these power angles it's hard to even touch down on the site you have to spend so many lives just to break on through high point they almost play that perfectly yeah and you know talking about Sexton he was commanding and demanding he was commanding you to stay in spawn and demanding that you let him kill you because you know, he did a great job, and I don't know what it is, but a couple of these games I've casted for, I, I see a pretty good bit of bullfrogs, and it's really exciting because, personally, that weapon just feels so good in hand, and it's nice to see if some of these players utilize it and give a little bit of, you know, a little bit of sparkle to the lead. Well, he's 7-5 to five with it. Keep your eyes on him. Flem Deasy hits the flank, clears the B site. Sexton trying to get in behind. Going to take the fight and even take him down. Looking for the second. Another victim to the Bullfrog. Pushing these spawns as well. Looking to spawn trap these defenders. But on the opposite side, Semtex breaks open on the B side. And Sexton already spotted out. So you're looking to clear this if you're if you're the side of Seahawks. But I think they're unaware of this. He's in the back line still. They're not even looking to clear it. Brewing going to find one. Clear the point. Sexton still raining terror in the back line. The Seahawks just so disconnected right now. We see these guys. It's so crazy to see that they both teams have a man over in these spawns. You know, we just saw some techs pushing those spawns as best as possible. We see these guys, you know, getting up in each other's grills and, you know, almost looking at a really weird matchup on how these spawns are going to react. It almost feels like they'd swap at some point and they just switch sides for the heck of it. But overall, it's doing high point a lot of good. And seeing that they already have two ticks on this B site so far, buying them a lot of time because B's a lot harder to control with than A, with it being so open comparatively. Sexton on a five spree, playing for streaks now. You keep your eyes on what he can make of that. I think he's locked down the artillery strike, so he has now looking for more. Can he find that cruise missile as well? Jumpy from the distance shuts him down. Can't find the streaks. 20 seconds now. Gotta get your foot on the point. Do you want to stop this clock and find some more time? Combat now in the spawn of high point. Cleaned up by Sexton off spawn. 12 seconds left. You just have to clear him off this. You have to play for the time because lives generally even. If you can clear Sexton, you might take it to the time bank here. So you oh. do. Down to 7 seconds. Brewing looking to stop the clock. Can he make it in time? 5 three for Jumpy. You're hopping on the A site now. The time stopped at 5 seconds, Mick. That's a great little switch right there from these guys. You know, we saw that clock ticking now. We're really scared. But if you look in that bottom left, we had guys setting up on A. They're going to try and get the switch over on the B site. Not exactly be as successful as they wanted to be. Sexton right there had the potential to close that out. You saw that man getting up on wing. Sexton wanted to keep on chasing around for that kill on barrels towards their spawn in that little corner that we see right here. Overall, the jumpy sitting in. And just overall, see we go see him go up top. And that honestly, if Sexton decided to just say, hey, I'ma just like step back a little bit, I'ma find a little corner to hide in, he could have bought out enough time to give these guys B possibly and you know elaborate the round for him. Definitely high point, I think, got a little bit too over aggressive there. Sexton himself. I mean, you were slaying out in the back line, but as you were doing so, there was some some stragglers from the Seahawks. Finding value on the point, keeping high point off of them. At some point, you would have liked to see Sexton pull it back and help his team out. But now you're looking at another strong defensive round from Seahawks. If they can do so, they would be on series point combat playing control after a 2k. And high point sent back to spawn. 
Mm, we see these guys right here trying to make a push out. Seems like the Seahawks had them locked down for the most part, slowing them down. But, I mean, that's exactly what they want. But it seems like they overextended. Now they're allowing a little bit of retaliation to come back onto this A site, which they're trying to capture. As High Point's just making a really strong establishment in the midfield, allowing these guys to kind of go back and forth and allowing them to push spawns once again, which, which is exactly what we see Sexton. Sexton signed a lease, basically, in the back line of <laughs> the Seahawks here. He pretty, pretty much lives there. Almost rent free, I'd say, if he didn't have 10 kills or 10 deaths. Can't even get to the A site. Seahawks are high point making sure that they control the mid plane. Control the choke at the second hard point. Lemdizi breaking off a nice 2k, gonna put their foot down on the A site. Stop the clock at 20 seconds. Lives are even as well mixed. So if you take this A site. It'd be looking good right now. Flem DZ cleaned up by Sexton. You're going to find a take-up progression. Brewing breaking on through with Freeze. Going to be one kill from Semtex, but can't find the second. Now the time draining even more. You're down to 15. High point. Going to push spawns here. Brewing can't find anything, but Freeze there to break on through and recover. It's the Calvary pulling in from high point. Kearns with two. Sexton cleaning up from the spawn. Four seconds are down. High point are going to be on series point now. Okay, I, I think I'm catching on to what's going on here. So when it comes down to the Seahawks, we've seen them every single time go 3-0 and when it comes to control. They've done a great job with it. They've always established in this. This is one of the first times in this season that they've actually had a point on the board against them, and now they have a lead on them when it comes to control. I think these guys are relying a little bit too much on these kills. You know, possibly in the past, we do see these guys pushing these spawns, doing a really good job of getting these frags. But when you're facing something like in somebody like High Point, you can't allow that to happen because they're both going back and forth. They're both pushing into these spawns. And if you don't get that early closeout like you do on these other people when it comes out of control, you know, I think everybody else is looking for the objective. Meanwhile, you're just looking to push as we see combat already just shoving right up the mid. And with When you get into that kind of situation and you have a man like, you know, Sexton retaliating on the other side of the field so much, I feel like that's the trump card they have is in Sexton disrupting that and slowing their whole flow down. Not even allowing Seahawks onto the point. A site looking to get cleaned up. All four are on there for the progression. Brewing looking for the cross and even clearing out his Seahawks even more. They're looking to end it here on the attack. Sexton now. Foot on the B site. Cleans up combat. Two players on the respawn. Semtex try, trying to break out for his team. All four players here. Sexton, what can you do? Semtex, do you even know that he's back there? Looking for the turn and Bird finds it. Still worrisome at that. Progression now on the B site. Brewing. Posted up on this power position. Combat with the help of Jumpy clears it. So no progression yet at B. Seahawks maintain this and stabilize. Down four points. You have a minute 40 to try to win this. And we do see guys over here looking towards the A site. Looking out for Jumpy over there. He's going to be in the corner. You know, able to pick off Kearns right there. And these guys, I think they're looking for new avenues. They're trying to push back in that spawn once again. But even when we saw Sexton earlier make a pretty aggressive push and almost get two kills right there, he didn't have the men follow up quick enough to allow them to capture that point. It felt like he was just pushing and he was going for those kills. And it feels like as a whole team, that's what they're trying to set up for. But overall, when you already have a point on the board, I know you have live advantages right now, but you can close this game out right now if you just get on that point. Instead of just waiting a little bit longer, fluffing those stats a little more, and just go ahead and close it out because a win overall is a lot more important than kills. Semtex, big double to clear the B side once again. Brewing, cleaned up from afar. High point, getting sent back to the spawn, almost evened up. Flem DZ actually spots the flank, and Semtex cleans it up. That's the first time I've seen them actually progressively take the fight to Sexton. And clear him off that flank now. Still maintaining a one point lead. Combat in the spawn of high point. Free cleans him up. Two kills now. Gonna give B control. Three kills. Gonna put they put Seahawks back on the spawn. And Sexton, where he does his work best. Looking to slay out before the Seahawks can even get there. Semtex and Combine on the break. Two ARs on the power angle. Free cleaning up house. DZ stops him before he can do so. You're on that third tick. High point just needs to step on there if they want to jumpy. Holding Seahawks alive. 
Temptations on board. Semtex watching over this. 34 seconds. Six lives to eight lives. Oh my god, Seahawks, they can do it here. No response, though. They have to bring it to the time bank. 24 seconds left. They have a player on. With two players out of this game. Only two players left to clutch up. Mm. Sexton makes it one. Jumpy, a big deed to do, but 14 seconds now. A two-on-one. -on Takes the gunfight to Sexton. Can he clean up this kill? Make it a one-on-one. -on -one. He's not going to spot the rotation. The oh. bullfrog. Oh, Sexton. Three to one. High point. They take this in a 3-0 sweep. Man, Sexton just saying, no, I, 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 you know what? Here's why I run this SMG. It's not the bullfrog anymore. It's the bullfrag, baby. Because we're getting killed out here with this thing. He's sitting there always in these spawns. He's finding ways around these opponents. And it's actually a, such a strong weapon when you look at it. You know, it has a quicker fire rate than it, the AK-74U. It's got all kinds of utility to it. And I think that's what he utilizes. And notice, you know, checkmate and control i feel like this is the moment i should i should take out the bullfrag but let's let's sit there and twist things up a little bit let's get in their spawn let's do what i do best and you know not only create a little bit of disruption to the point but especially when it comes to you know their spawns and then just being able to stay alive and i feel like it took the seahawks a little too long there to catch on to him to finally collectively say okay we need to take care of this guy if we're going to go anywhere and it, it took them you know three rounds to look and get the gist of that i mean well that high rate of fire is gonna kind of diminish when you're going for those long range gunfights like that 74u but when you're sexing you don't need to do so because you're eliminating the range by just walking into the spine so he's gonna do a good job at keeping at bay seahawks in the back line for holding them to a 3-1 control in a 3-0 series as the 7-0 standing for high point grows their lead even farther in their division and possibly even hoping to crack that top 25 maybe in the in the new week high point i know that's where you're looking i know that's what you want to do and looking at that i mean definitely possible to do so i mean mick they they just absolutely took over with that triple ar setup now you don't yeah. usually see teams kind of kind of run that but high point really utilizing the vetoes in this sense sending us to raid and checkmate doing them a justice for that triple AR. Even if it went the distance to Moscow, you would favor that triple AR setup. Yeah. And overall, I feel like high point at this stage in the competition where they're just facing a regular season, we haven't seen a split yet. These guys, that's they're going to feel comfortable right now. You know, I always love seeing the underdogs take over. I obviously always root for them in the back of my head, even though I may not say it as much as I need to. But overall, these guys, you know, high point, at some time, we did see a lot of mistakes with them tonight. We also saw a lot of mistakes with the Seahawks. But these guys have so much more film to work with. They have so much more resources at hand for them to sit there and figure out how to get their season together because they're not out of this by any means. But high point, they need, I feel like at some point in time, when it comes around to split two, they're not going to have too much to work with because it's hard to sit there and critique yourself when you win compared to when you obviously have point blank reasons in front of you on screen of why you lose so overall i feel like high points gonna have their time coming if they don't you know find a little a little stride to stick to but overall still a very impressive team from both sides i definitely agree more seahawks i mean if you just break down onto those vods fix your communication you could definitely crack into the higher higher uh the higher standings of the ccl but right now we're going to be looking at game number two up shortly after this break. It's going to be Eagle Cod, uh, Eagles Cod Gold versus Florida State Garnett. So, ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned for the Alpha Stream because we will be right back after this commercial break.